So that was a pretty dang cold night. I think it dropped to like 35 degrees. We didn't expect it to drop down that low. We are here in Hot Springs. Well, actually, Norman, Arkansas, uh, because we are here to see the eclipse. This is one of those uh, impromptu trips. My wife was able to get the day off and we were like, okay, let's just get in the vehicle and find the hip camp somewhere uh, in the path of total totality, solar total. What is, what is the totality of the solar eclipse? Solar eclipse totality. Uh, we don't know what we're gonna do after the eclipse. We're gonna watch it here today, but then afterwards we might stay here again another night. I mean, it's, uh, it's gonna be warmer tonight. Uh, or we might break the drive up going home because it was a this was a 13 hour drive for us with all the stops and everything so we might after the eclipse hit some trails we don't know but i am going to enjoy what we have right now and uh hopefully see how this whole day progresses i kind of like that there's no plan Man, how crazy, how quickly the temperature will change when the sun comes up, right? It's about 10 o'clock and it's like 80 degrees. So in the last six months, uh, we have been busy. Uh, I have been busy editing the film for Waypoint Unknown. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will put the link in the description below. Go check it out because me and the crew are really proud of that video. Uh, but in that time that I was editing, we were going out and exploring, but I just wasn't collecting content. I just didn't want to be backed up with footage and videos. But now that that film's done, I can actually get back to some of these exploration videos that I know some of you have been asking for. A lot of you have also been asking like, hey, you've been reviewing all the stuff in the last six months. When do we actually get to see you use it on the field? So this is a perfect opportunity. I'm gonna take you around the rig, kind of show you some of the new additions, some of the mods and all the things that we've been reviewing and how we've been using it in the last six months. So I think the main obvious and glaring thing uh, is this new awning with awning walls on it this is from outland motorworks they went ahead and got me this one to try out and i have loved it so much man like it does the coverage on it is huge and it's just giving us exactly the room that we need i will say that on overland trips where we know we're going to be jumping around a lot uh, i'm probably not going to put up the walls it is a little bit of a and not a pain it was easy it was just zippered in but you know to fold it back up again and put it away just it takes a while but let me take you inside because i mean look it's just so super roomy i have uh this light from ola ring i like it a lot because these things kind of fold in and it's compact and you have like different color modes like this one is like amber and then you can you know go to white and then you also have like a regular flashlight you can go to pink you can go flashing red and then over here I strung up uh, these, I don't know if you can even see it, but there are these like really thin string lights that I got like at an REI sale for like $10. And that's plugged in to a 12 volt socket, uh, USB socket that I have here. Speaking of which, that is being powered along with the fridge uh, with that dual battery setup that's underneath here. This thing has been a champ man like I don't know why more people don't do dual battery setups uh, you know power banks are great but when you have a dual battery setup man nothing needs to be like plugged into you know unplugged somewhere and then replugged back into a power bank like everything can just stay on the Jeep the fridge everything like that and it basically stays stays powered up and right now because the Jeep is actually not running the entire uh, dual battery is being 
powered up by the solar that's up there. Uh, over here, we've got that propane tank holder. This uh, propane tank holder is from Power Tank, this thing right here. But this right here is from Adventure Imports. This is made, uh, you guys saw me review this. This is made for, really for Max Tracks. You get this Max Tracks plate that you put on here so you can hold your Max Tracks to your spare tire. But I just modified it to put a propane tank holder. And that basically holds my propane tank to the tire and then I can remove it when I get home. Right here is the Devos Outdoor camp light this camp light is clutch man i love having it now one of the complaints people had was like well in order for you to turn it on and off you gotta bring this thing down because i mean it is, it's like way up there so what i decided to do is i have it kind of close to the vehicle here so at night i just have to open my rooftop tent uh, from the side and i can turn it on and off it basically acts as kind of like a light to all the stuff that we have there on the rack. Uh, what I have up there is uh, the bag, the storm, uh, well, the typhoon bag uh, from Front Runner. And that holds all of our blankets, pillows, everything like that. And then next to that is the cub pack from Front Runner right there. That has like our power banks and anything we need for inside the tent. That way at night, all we have to do is open the little window and we have access to all of our uh, blankets, pillows, and power banks, things like that. Because that typhoon bag and that cub pack is waterproof, I mean, there's no water intrusion or anything getting in there. So basically that light acts as kind of our light for all this stuff. So at night that stays up there, kind of illuminates the area so we know where we're going. And then I can grab everything from that window. And then when we're ready to go to bed from up there, I can just turn off the Devos light. Going to the front, you see all the new KC lights that have just been installed. We got the Slim Light 8 right here at the bottom. And then we have the Pro 6 light bar up at the top. Haven't had a chance to test these out on the field yet. That's what I'm hoping to do today. If we end up on the trail tonight where it's a little bit darker, then I'll be able to light these babies up and see how well they do. Now in here, uh, got some really cool stuff. This, all it is, is basically just like a like a zippered compartment with some pockets. You can get one that has a cup holder and this just kind of goes on like this and it acts as an armrest. I didn't think like that would be like practical. I, I just bought it because I was like, hey, you know, support local business and see how I like it. I, I ended up loving it a lot. On long drives, you basically can just rest your arm right here and then I can put everything I need uh, that for the vehicle like you know just little things like chapstick and whatever else i might need like little you know parking tickets or whatever like that you know when you're parking at an airport or whatever and you want to put your ticket somewhere you'll remember like receipts like any little stuff i don't even know what this is i think see wrappers that's probably my kid down here i replaced the jeep um you know the netting that the jeep has i replaced that with this like molly panel thing this is super cheap i got it on amazon i think it was like 20 bucks for a pair so i have one on this side and one on the other side as well but it's like it has this huge opening that you can just kind of put stuff in got my uh, olight flashlight right there and then this thing i cannot wait to review with you guys this is the new midland uh cxt gxt 67 pro uh this is base this is like their po most powerful handheld yet we'll do a deeper dive on that later sea sucker stuff um i don't run the entire sea sucker kitchen setup uh, we do that on the forerunner we have a kitchen setup already on the jeep so I, I don't really need to bring that but what i do bring is i do bring the sink i put it on the window versus on the panel itself because i did the wrap on the jeep and for some reason or the other because i think the wrap is porous uh you know you know of course it has like some where you know where air can kind of escape as you're wrapping this is not gripping onto it as well. I'm going to have to bring that up to Sea Sucker and let them know that that's, that's kind of a thing. Uh, I also have a hook. I use one of their hooks here to kind of hold our rag. Water port is here as well. And then I have this, uh, this blue line uh, right here attaches to my TJM compressor. This allows me to kind of fill up my tires uh, from the outside, but also it helps to pressurize this, uh, this water port so that you have like a much streamer you know better power than you hand pumping it it, it just it's so much better you just turn on the, the air compressor and it basically pumps it up i did it so that you have this like 
gauge here so that when we plug this into here I can see just how strong the uh, the water port uh, the pressure is you want to kind of pump it up to about 30 psi and that's a good pressure so then when it starts to dip you just turn the air, the air compressor back on there is a shutoff valve on this as well see so that way you can kind of keep all the pressure inside the water port then when you need to refill it back up just open that and that'll let some more air back in uh, that compressor it's right there like I like it there a lot because now you have uh, ventilation and everything like that it used to be inside there but now dual batteries in there and then the compressor is over here oh and how could I forget the new ARB rear bumper man this thing is so awesome it just completes the look of the Jeep one and then two I can actually stand on this now versus the original one the plastic one that comes with the Jeep that one also has already started to fade anyway plus I also have two points of recovery now on here you got one over here one over there so in those situations where I need to get pulled out there are some points in the back now uh, we do have this new these new steps uh, from uh, Hook Road uh, but it's also if you look it's starting to starting to rust like in certain areas and I only had it for like not even a month and it's already starting to rust so I might take those off I, I really want the ones from Metal Cloak and hopefully I can get those installed uh, in the next couple months or so now this is a new setup that I have going on here I decided to reuse uh, the one Tigris uh, seat back molly panel and on here is basically camp stuff like I have a whole case right here for vehicle EDC that just has all the tools that I, I did a whole video on a EDC kit for my vehicle but that has since expanded and so I have a lot more tools now so I put everything in there I'm gonna do a whole updated video on basically my EDC kits and then I have two other kits here one says fire one says headlamps and obviously you'll know what's in there this is my Blackbeard fire kit that's in here all these patches you can actually get on Amazon, but you can customize it for however, whatever it is you want it to say. So it's a great way to label all of your, all of your kits, you know, so vehicle EDC, you got fire headlamps. This is awesome. I ordered a couple more uh, for my other uh, pouches and bags that I have. All right, let's move up into the tent. So the light that I had before uh, that came with this tent, it died. And uh, instead of replacing it, uh, I did, I realized that I still had this light force uh, LED strip light. Basically this goes to like a really long extension cord there that has a switch. That extension cord I can just kind of route to outside of the tent and down into the vehicle where we have a 12 volt socket. So that basically lights up the inside of the tent now. So remember what I said about being able to access things from inside the tent I love this setup so much because from here I can get right to my typhoon bag that has all of our pillows and blankets and whatever else we might need it's waterproof so it's not gonna get wet uh, when it rains and then I also have access to that cub pack and that just has essentials like wipes that we use to clean ourselves off with at night uh, it also holds this jackery that's sitting right there this jackery is the 240 this just basically powers up or you know charges up all of our phones tablets things that we want to charge up you know, our personal stuff uh, while we sleep uh, it works great still um, but there are more powerful units than this 240 uh, that's about the same size because I need something small to keep in the tent so I'm not lugging a humongous power bank up here so we're gonna try to replace that with one from Blue Eddy or Anchor or whatever and then that can just go inside that cub pack along with everything else is starting which is awesome I'm gonna put a filter on this camera and see if we can capture some of it all right take a look we've got partial coverage now I don't know how much you can tell but all the crickets and nightly insects are starting to make noise now because they're somewhat they think that it's dusk and it's about to get dark and so you can hear them like making chirping noises now like as if it's nighttime it's wild all right so we have like 
like full totality here. Like it's just all of a sudden it got dark and I mean, you just see this ring around the moon. It's just, I've never witnessed anything like this before. This is nuts. This is so worth coming out to see this. Just seeing it in just full total solar eclipses. Yeah, it is bananas. I can't even describe like what it is it feels like when you're like right there and you're looking at it with your own eyes, you know? I don't know, even everybody in here kind of got emotional just seeing that. It's so otherworldly. But we were gonna hit some trails. However, it's already, I don't know, 3.13 right now. And we have to go to another hip camp all the way down in Louisiana. So we are just gonna go ahead and hit the road and get down there. If we have time, if we get there a little bit early enough, I'll check on X and see if there are uh, some trails in that area and maybe we'll go hit that. I just kinda wanna get within that vicinity so that we you know, are ready to settle in if we need to. So it looks like we're pivoting. There is a huge storm that is moving north uh, and it's gonna pass by uh, the place where we were gonna camp tonight. It's gonna just be wet and like pretty bad. It's a, yeah, a huge, pretty bad thunderstorm that's coming through. So we're gonna drive through the storm, keep going south because the storm's moving north and find another place somewhere in Louisiana uh, where we can camp for tonight. Yeah, it's kind of putting a damper on our plans, but uh, we don't want to be at a campsite where it, we're just going to get flooding and, and all that stuff. So we're going to just keep heading and see if we can find a place to stay tonight. So it's about... 10 o'clock at night, we got into camp really late. Uh, we were trying to avoid all the storms uh, that were coming north and we actually had to go even more south than we intended. We're in Louisiana, we're about five hours from home, so we're not too far anymore. I really wanted to hit the trails today, but we just, the way weather was, uh, it was just not gonna, gonna happen. But you know, we pivot and we do what we gotta do. So now I wanna eat and uh, get some food in our bellies and then get some sleep because I am tired. We have been driving all day more than we expected to be driving. Yeah. So we're headed home. Uh, it is uh, third day being on the road. We basically made a humongous loop starting off in the Gulf Coast, shot up all the way to uh, near Little Rock uh, to Norman, Arkansas to see the eclipse. Came down and the plan was to stay somewhere in Ruston, Louisiana and then head back home. But with the storm, that was coming up and it, and it was pretty bad. It got pretty scary last night when it was dark and the back roads of Louisiana, there's nothing there. And it was just storming and no street lights. And so we, were, we had to keep going south to get through the storm. Finally ended up here in Washington, Louisiana near Baton Rouge. This wasn't, I, 
by whatever standards you guys might have when it comes to overlanding, this is not like overlanding, which is why I'm kind of starting to hate that word a bit because it, it's starting to become one of those things where you have to do all these things, like crazy things, right? Like hit crazy trails, almost get stuck, camp off site and all this stuff. And But what this was, was exploration. This was us just getting out and driving the 13 hours to witness a once in a lifetime event, which I'm never gonna get that image out of my head. To see it in person, to literally look up and you just see this, this black hole in the sky and it's like glowing. It, it, it was so life altering. If you've never seen a, a full solar eclipse, like in all of its totality, it, it, I can't even begin to describe how amazingly beautiful that was it's obviously not the crazy overland trip that i was hoping we would have uh you know where we could hit some trails and and really push the limits but at the same time i'm also with my family and i have to think about making sure we're all safe and that we're all good uh and that we uh get home safely and, and without further issues that being said i am gonna check the trails right now and see if there are some trails around here that we can kind of hit that might be a little bit easy on our way home just so I can get my fix but this was a trip to be remembered for sure even without all the crazy stuff even without all the you know the 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 mountains and the you know getting in the thick of a trail and I had a great time this was super fun and it's going to be memorable yeah let's see where the rest of the day takes us Hopefully home eventually. I've been itching to hit the trails and go off road uh, this whole trip. So I'm going to jump over to the iPad and see if there's at least a trail that we can hit. Maybe something easy uh, on our way back to the house. Uh, what's great about Onyx is that wherever you are, you can basically find trails near you. Uh, go ahead and open the app. Once you click on the little bottom right corner, uh, you can click on that and that'll basically tell you where you are. Right here, it says Indian Bayou. You'll see this this whole trail area right there. We have to jump onto I-10, which is right here. So what if we kind of cut down here on 49 and then make our way onto one, what is that, 150, and then find our the trailhead here and make our way down towards I-10. Once you click on that, if you click on it just to get some information, you will see it is open. Uh, it's easy, technical rating one to 10. Distance is 20 miles. Let's go to trail reports. If you go to trail report, uh, you'll see some people open, open, open. There hasn't been any issues with it at all. So that looks like a good one for us to jump onto. So let's head over to that trail and see what kind of shots and experiences we can have. <laughs> <laughs> 